The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, has filed a lawsuit against President Muhammad Buhari asking the court to declare illegal and unconstitutional the plan by the administration to track, intercept and monitor WhatsApp messages, phone calls and text messages of Nigerians and other people. Now, the group says the move is an arbitrary interference by the administration into respect for family and private life, the home and correspondence. It also fails to meet the requirements of legality, necessity and proportionality. Well, joining us to discuss this and break it down is Kolawole Oluwadari. He's the Deputy Director of SERAP. Thank you very much, Kolawole, for joining us. Uh, thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Yes. Um, a lot of people may not necessarily be able to come to terms with this story because it seems a bit far-fetched. It's something that you would hear on the news, uh, you know, abroad that um, maybe the FBI or the, the Secret Service is listening in on calls. And, of course, that would cause some form of opera. But for, for a Nigerian government to be um, openly trying to listen in on messages and phone calls and, you know, many would say it's an invasion of privacy. Um, but you have come out to say it's illegal. Uh, shed some light on this for us because we already know that we cannot have access to Twitter except we use VPNs. That's a bypass. So here we are talking about WhatsApp. Um, thank you very much. Uh, you know, we call it unlawful because it fails to pass the test of legality. And to put it in proper context, um, Chapter 4 of the 1999 Constitution guarantees Nigerians certain rights, principal among which, you know, based on the topic on that discussion, is a freedom to privacy and private family life, which is Section 37 of the Constitution. And Section 39 also guarantees Nigerians the freedom of expression that is to communicate and both uh, to receive information. And uh, the law recognizes that these rights, of course, they are not absolute, which is why Section 45 provides for certain instances that uh, those rights can be derogated from. And that, that uh, compasses the principle, that the, 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 what is called a three-part test, of whether such actions will be that they are legal, whether they are proportional, or whether at all they can be said to be necessary. So in this instance, there is no law presently in Nigeria that allows any of the law enforcement agencies or any other agency for that matter to monitor the WhatsApp conversations of Nigerians. And it's basically just to eavesdrop on phone calls and SMSs and other things that would go on on private the phones of private individuals, which is why we say it's unlawful. Okay. And if at all there was to be any law, that law still has to conform uh, to the rights granted under the Constitution. And of course, the Constitution being the supreme law of the land, if any law conflicts with the Constitution, that is what the law says, that or that law will be void to the extent of its inconsistency. But even as it is, we yet to, there is no law that within the Nigerian government have told us or told Nigerians that uh, the, the, the monitoring, uh, call it the proposed monitoring. I don't know whether it's been done presently. It, it, it has been or will take place. Mm. As much as I applaud Sarah, because I think Sarah has been doing a lot in terms of non-governmental organizations and uh, civic, civil society, um, there's a lot, a lot more work, or a lot more burden that just Sarah can carry. As much as I'm praising you, I want to also ask, where is the right of the Nigerian when, as much as we say yeah, the Constitution is supreme, um, well, you go to a police station and they say that bail is free. We have a right to free bail, but that doesn't happen. So where is the average Nigerian's right? Um, we also have a right to protest. Where is that right today? Because we're unable to protest. And you've, you've seen the stories coming from the federal government, the National Executive Council, urging people not to protest on a day where people were killed at a sudden toll gate here in Lagos. Where is that right of the average Nigerian when Twitter was banned? We have freedom to associate and free speech. Where is that right in all of this? Because they've been able to successfully put a gag order of sorts or put a stop to some of these things. What will stop them from going ahead with WhatsApp if they're indeed thinking about it? Uh, thank you very much. Which is why we have had to go to court in this instance. And it's quite sad that we would have agencies of government uh, 
breached the law time and again with impunity. And that itself is encouraging other citizens uh, to, to break the laws. The laws are very clear, and I dare say that we are where we are in Nigeria presently, not because we don't have laws. Of course, laws, just like everywhere, they are not perfect. They're a work in progress, and they're a tool of social engineering. But it is that will that is lacking in Nigeria. That is the will, I call it political will, if you will, um, to enforce those laws. So as part of the laws, as part of the rights guarantee, Nigeria is the freedom of association and the freedom to express yourself, which includes the freedom to protest. Um, whether in, in real times on the street or whether um, on social media or by whatever means. And so when you, when these rights are being restrained by either state power or individuals, it is a breach of those laws. And you ask me about what would be the remedy. The remedy is what uh, Serap is doing presently, uh, to approach the courts and to ventilate your grievances and to ensure that the courts uh, give you your day, uh, give you your day in court, and that um, those rights will be enforced by the courts, which is why you see the way the fundamental rights enforcement procedure rules. That is why it is called enforcement procedure. So it, it, it is taken for granted that the rights exist as codified in chapter four, and then you approach the courts whenever you think those rights, is, they are being breached, they, are, they have been breached or they are likely to be breached. And having said that, uh, government can appeal. Uh, uh, appealing to citizens not to protest is still within the rights of government so their own freedom of expression. And, and the citizens also hold the rights to disregard that appeal. But what will be a breach of the right is for either the police or any law for enforcement agencies to use force uh, to prevent people or disperse people from exercising their fundamental rights. And that should not be. And if that do, uh, happens, naturally, uh, the, the, uh, the lawful means of enforcing that right is to approach the courts, uh, not through self-help. Mm. Talking about the courts, approaching the courts, I know of so many suits that, Sarah, again, I applaud Sarah because you keep doing the job. You're in the news every day. You're asking the government to... Um, make this known and that known. I always remember a particular case where uh, I think it was in 2015, if I'm not mistaken, if not, um, you know, further back in 2014, but I think it's 2015, where Sarah, um, you know, had asked political parties to make their finances known as we speak. I'm still sure that that case is still pending in court. And there are other arrays of issues that are still pending in court. But then we also know that the judiciary uh, in Nigeria has uh, lots of question marks as it is today. Um, can we trust the courts to give the average Nigerian uh, the justice that he or she deserves and reinforce that right that we all have that have been trampled upon by our elites and, of course, the people who lead us? Yes. Um, the judiciary has its own problems, not necessarily peculiar as to the circumstances, but possibly the nature of the problems, just like every arm of government. Um, but those problems should not prevent the average uh, the citizen from approaching the courts. Of course, the problems, uh, they, they make the wheel of progress to, uh, of justice uh, turn ever so slowly. But we, there's still no other uh, provision for any individual to ventilate his grievances, which is why Section 6 of the Constitution empowers the judiciary to be the final arbiter, even up to the Supreme Court, to determine issues of rights, uh, uh, obligations uh, between either citizens, or between citizens and government, and even between government themselves, which is why you see, for instance, states have to go to the courts to enforce their rights, uh, and to VAT, for instance. Uh, the court remains... But the is, isn't, that, isn't that... Wasn't that expedited because it was a war between politicians, like minds? If it was versus, if it was us versus the government, would it be that fast? Would it be that um, quick? Uh, the response that they got, would they have gotten it as quick as they, you know, they got it? It is a question we've asked ourselves, even though, though our lawyers have also asked themselves. Yeah, it's Sarah. It is unfortunate that we will see political cases or sages of such nature and take precedence over even enforcement of fundamental rights. Knowing fully well that these fundamental rights or the provision of them can lead to a larger the, the problem. Oh, I think they but that is what we've seen. It should not be. And that's also form part of our advocacy, too. Um, 
We've also, you and I live in this country, and we've seen a, 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 I mean, so many cases of disregard to the rule of law, court orders. They pick and choose which one to obey and which ones not to obey. Uh, even if the courts were to favor the average Nigerian, which should be the case, um, what's, the, what's the guarantee that the Buhari-led administration, which we all know has been stuck in its ways and, you know, um, does what it wants to do, can we be guaranteed uh, in any way that um, there will be an obedience to that court order if it does come down to that? Um, I think... Uh the spokesman for the administration will be in a better position to answer that. That's why this administration but based on precedent. has this penchant to disobey others of courts. But as law of any citizens, we have no other option but to rely on those courts as the only avenue to ventilate our grievances, which is why we continue in this, what I'll call needless advocacy, but more or less uh, still uh, nonetheless important to ensure that government obeys the order of courts, knowing fully well that judiciary is part of government. It's just an arm of government that gives judgment. It, it doesn't do anyone any good, not even the president or any member of this administration, and to disobey uh, orders of courts. We will continue in our advocacy, nonetheless, to ensure that these orders are obeyed. Um, I'm curious. We're all talking about, you know, the, the reactions from Sarah, but... As a, as a Nigerian, as a, a legal practitioner, why would you think government would want to listen in on the calls of the average Nigerian person, knowing that? I mean, for Twitter, not every Nigerian uses Twitter. Not everyone who's um, uh, in the country is tech savvy to use Twitter. But then WhatsApp seems to be the most accessible for almost every Nigerian. And I'm, I, I'm, and I'm wondering, as we speak, why do you think the government is so eager to do this? Again, it's a two-pronged question. If they're successful in putting, bringing down Twitter and now they're going after WhatsApp, what, what, what's going to be next? As to the rationale behind the, the, the rationale behind government's decision to monitor WhatsApp conversations. And again, I'll use the right word, it's if stropping. That's what it is. Listening into other people's uh, private conversations without their permission. It's just not only the breach of the law, but just um, it's flagrant abuse of power and not mentioning the huge amount of funds being voted for this. That's over 4 billion naira in the 2020 budget. There is no law that allows this and we believe that all every Nigerian must, uh, must not only uh, condemn this, but also uh, take like the steps, just like the Sarah is doing to, to resist uh, these. Uh, but we can we should continue to defend our rights uh, to uh, to privacy and our rights of freedom of expression. I really don't see a way forward. Uh, to, I really don't see any rationale for this, either in law or fact. And national security being such a big word, if I can call it that, to throw around to defend this unlawful actions of government cannot stand. Government is yet to justify this uh, uh, whether it's necessary or proportional to the issues or the risks that they, 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 that, could, that they allege uh, that we face by eavesdropping to people's conversations. And the last time, uh, data shows that more than 90 million Nigerians are subscribed to WhatsApp. And what would be the, what would be the rationale? What would be the framework for even this? What is to be listened to? Who determines who, whose conversations should be listened to? Who determines the use? Of, of such uh, private data, it's 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 nothing more than the fringes. It's an ill wind that will blow no one, no good, ultimately. Mm. Well, Kolawole Uluwadare is the deputy director for Serap, and we want to appreciate you for speaking with us tonight. Oh, thank you very much. All right. Well, on that note, we'll take a short break to listen to the opinions of Nigerians to the federal government's plan to monitor WhatsApp. And when we return, I'll say my goodbyes. Yeah, I think on this WhatsApp call of the thing, you know, I think the Nigerian government is um, is going too far. Um, we have other challenges in the country where I think the government should pay more attention. Um, by the time you start monitoring WhatsApp, WhatsApp calls, that means you are infringing on the people's uh, freedom of uh, speech, uh, which is uh, which is enshrined in our own constitution. You know. Um, the, 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 in, in this case, where is where is where is the citizen's freedom? You know, by the time you start 
monitoring their so you can't have your personal life anymore just because somebody's running government. It's it not supposed to be so. Not supposed to be so at all. I think if they continue in this pattern, there will be a time the people will revolt. And uh, it will, they will revolt to a point where the government will not be able to contend them. I feel so bad because it's my privacy. So government monitoring my my privacy is not so making sense. And again, it's not it shouldn't be something of um, um, accident something. It is my privacy. It is my home, and it is not their own problem. Anything concerning message, it is for me. So I don't feel they, they need to monitor anything concerning me. You want to know my opinion on that? Yeah, I want to just need just your own opinion. Okay. Uh, first, I don't think is any is right. WhatsApp and uh, my privacy is my privacy. So I don't think anybody needs to intrude into my privacy. I have a phone. I do businesses on WhatsApp. I make conversation. I make money on WhatsApp. So why then do you have to monitor how I make my money? It's crazy. Or is it? Or does it, does it mean it you have to get to a point whereby? They are going to just take technology away from us. It's not possible. This is a modern age. We don't need to go back. Everything, civilization has taken place. It's undoable. Nobody can do that. Not even the president of this nation can do that. Why do you think so? It's, it's, a, it's a private change, you understand? It's, it's, it's my privacy. I can chat with my, 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 my loved ones, you understand? My friends abroad, home, anywhere, you understand? So nobody has the right. As a, I think the, one of the sons has said it already that. Uh, I think uh, Femi Falana has said it already that the uh, federal government has no right. It's, it's our right. Yeah. Well, it is our right, and we're hoping that those rights will continuously be protected. I am Mary Anacon, thanking you for being part of the program tonight. See you tomorrow.